Have you ever noticed something strange? Most Indians look fine in the clothes, but the moment the shirts come off, you see skinny arms, thin legs, almost no muscle, and all the fat piled around the belly. This is not just your observation. This is not just your family. This is not just people around you. This is a pattern. This is what doctors call the Asian Indian phenotype or simply the thin fat body type. We don't look overweight in the usual sense, but we carry dangerous belly fat, which is one of the biggest reason India is on track to become the diabetes capital of the world and this is where things get scary because belly fat is not just about appearance it is metabolically active it directly affects insulin hormones inflammation and even heart health but here's the real question why are we like this is it genetics is it our diet or is it our lifestyle the truth is it's not one thing it's a combination of multiple factors stacking against us over decades let's break it down step by step Think about our plates. Idli, dosa, rice, chapati, poha, upma, carbs, carbs and more carbs. Now carbs are not the villain. The problem is overconsumption and lack of balance. This is where many people misunderstand nutrition. They either blame carbs completely or defend them blindly. The real issue is proportion. A major national ICMR led dietary survey published in Nature Medicine found that on average about 62% of daily calories in the Indian diet come from carbohydrates one of the highest proportions in the world. That means more than half of our energy comes from one single macronutrient and protein way too low. Protein is what builds muscles and prevents the skinny fat look. It improves insulin sensitivity, supports metabolism and keeps hunger in control. But in India, protein is often an afterthought. Maybe a spoon of dal, a little curd or some chole, not nearly enough. And when protein is low for years, muscle mass slowly disappears even if your weight stays the same. That's how you become thin fat. For example, one of my clients, Ejaz, a busy professional used to eat three to four rotis at dinner with just a tiny bowl of dal. By Indian standards, this looked normal, but he had no energy and a belly that just wouldn't shrink. Once we doubled his protein, adding paneer bhurji, eggs and curd while slightly reducing the roti, his body starts changing in weeks. Same calories, different composition, completely different result. If you want to fix the skinny fat look, don't fear carbs, but bring protein to the front of your plate. Most people in India rely on BMI, body mass index, to judge if they are healthy. If the number is between 18 and 25, they think they are safe. But BMI doesn't tell you the full story. BMI only looks at height and weight. It does not care where the fat is stored. It does not care how much muscle you have. And it does not care about your metabolic health. Study shows that 43% of Indians with normal BMI are metabolically unhealthy. That means you can look normal by BMI, but inside your body, you may already have high cholesterol, pre-diabetes or fatty liver. That's why so many of us get shocked when blood reports show problems, even though we are not overweight. Instead of BMI, start tracking your waist size, body fat percentage and energy levels. If your waist keeps increasing, your energy keeps dropping and your blood markers are worsening, something is wrong regardless of what BMI says. Walk into any gym in India and you will see two types of people. The middle-aged crowd who joined after getting diagnosed with diabetes, cholesterol or fatty liver, the younger ones rushing to lose weight for a wedding, event or vacation. Both go all in for two months, then drop everything once the event is over. Fitness isn't a seasonal project. It's a lifestyle. Health doesn't work on deadlines. It works on consistency. Then there are myths like if I stop gym, I'll gain more fat. Protein powder damages kidneys. The truth, you gain fat only if you eat more than you burn not because you stop gym. Protein powder isn't harmful. The real issue is that the industry research suggests that up to 60 to 70 percent of supplements sold in India are fake, counterfeit, unregistered or unapproved. And recent testing on popular protein powders found nearly 70 percent were mislabeled and some even contain toxin. Important thing to note, it refers to dietary supplements in general including vitamins, herbal products, sports nutrition, etc. Being fake, counterfeit, unapproved, not necessarily all supplements in India. And before the comments start, one bad product doesn't make the entire category bad. Just like one fake medicine doesn't mean all medicines are useless. A few fake supplements don't mean all supplements are fake. The issue is quality and regulation, not the idea of supplementation itself. If you buy from shady sources, of course, it's risky. But if you buy from verified, 
authentic brands, protein powder is as safe as eating pani. From childhood, we are trained to prioritize studies and jobs, school, board exams, college, GPA, work, long hours, better salary, health, always put on the back seat. This conditioning runs deep. We normalize stress, long sitting hours, skipped meals and poor sleep and call it hard work. By the time we hit our 40s, we have already collected a bundle of problems. Back pain, cholesterol, diabetes, low energy. In fact, nearly half of Indian adults don't even meet the WHO physical activity guideline of 150 minutes per week. That's the official minimum the WHO says you need for good health and yet more than 40 to 45 percent of adults fall short of it. What's the point of making money and building a career if you don't stay healthy enough to enjoy it? Our traditional diets were built for farmers, laborers and factory workers who burned 3000 to 4000 calories daily. Rice heavy meals made sense when you were plowing fields or lifting bricks. But today we sit in front of a laptop for 10 to 12 hours. We order food on Zomato or Swiggy. Our daily step counts barely touches 3000. Yet we still cling to the same high carb, low protein meals as our grandparents. This mismatch is why fat piles up around the belly even when you eat home cooked meals. Home food is not automatically healthy if it doesn't match your activity level. So why why is average Indian physically unfit? Too many carbs, too little protein, trusting BMI instead of real health markers, short-term fitness mindset and myths, prioritizing career over health, following old diets that don't fit our modern sedentary lifestyle. But here's the good news. We may not be blessed with the best genetics, but with the right nutrition, training and mindset, we can beat the thin fat trap. My clients, busy professionals with jobs just like yours, have lost belly fat, built muscle and regained energy by making small science back changes. If you want me to help you in your fitness journey, check the link in the description for my 12-week lean body program or visit gympansy.com where I'll show you how to fix the skinny fat body step by step. And remember, fitness isn't a two-month project. It's a lifestyle. I'll see you in the next video.